Hello, Josh. Hello, how are you doing? I am fine. I'm very impressed with your weather. Oh, it's nice. That's one of the benefits of living in California. Yes, it is. Well, I'm coming there because, you know, I live, I live on the North Sea. <laughs> well, now, I got a bedroom, so. That is as cold <laughs> as it sounds. <laughs> I, I grew up, well, I, I lived most of my life in Idaho, so they're getting hit with snow right now. So it's, it's <laughs> nice to be stationed here for a couple of years. No, everybody I talk to from California, you've just got me envious. <laughs> <laughs> right. You've had a pretty bad week, Josh. Yeah, it's it's been interesting to say the least. Mm. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, I know we started it by you saying you're in California, which is very important to me because people, when they they scam using you or any of the other boys, um, they always say that you're deployed, and you're obviously not. No, not 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 right now. No, I'm a I'm actually a recruiter. For recruiter. For three years and while you're on recruiting uh in the army you're you're not allowed to deploy technically because you're supplying you know the mission to put people in there yeah. in the army yeah so that's that's good but yeah what a week i mean how's your mom uh she i she hadn't even seen it by the time i got the message um and i read it and i talked to my station commander and uh I knew like what had happened that this this girl had you know reached out and she was like well I sent this to your mom and oh your wife is next and uh I called my mom and she's like well oh do I need to check my message request she saw it and she laughed so um for the most part like I don't the way I've lived my life I've been married for over seven years um I have a really good relationship with with all my family and yes. They they know that that not, this would you know none of these accusations. This is it. Nothing. I mean, none of you. Ab oh, Joe, we've got a Nigerian. Um, uh, none of you that I've ever ever spoken to has never you know you've all been in a really really settled relationship or not looking you know. Um, there's there's nobody that's actually can can ever say they've been on a dating site and have looked. Um, for those that are watching. Josh actually um, has been used by Nigerians to scam. They actually were, and this, you know, really is not surprising because they're scum, but um, they were targeting 16 year old girls, high school girls. Yeah, yeah. And from, from, from Alabama, I believe, which I've never really even been to Alabama or anything like that. But, well, you, <laughs> you know. know. It's disturbing that they're targeting 16-year-old girls, but I have known it happened before. Um, and I'm not going to argue with the Nigerian that's there, but yeah, you're scamming your skull. Um, yeah, so anyway, they, um, so they've been targeting the 16-year-old girls. What actually, uh, the two things that really got to me was one, this girl's friend was coming to you. Now, this girl had researched you and she found you because she's a good she's a good high school friend she said she found your mom and she could never find um the, the fact scam. that it wasn't yeah. you yeah <laughs> and that's that's what sticks out to me the most is you know and it's from a a teenager like that i i expect a little bit of you know i don't i don't I don't know what the word is. Um, I would call it respect. Yeah. And, you know, she might have had good intentions, you know, sticking up for her friend. And that's great. You know, you need to stick up for your friends and family. But <laughs> the fact is, she did all of the research to find my actual profile. Um, she reached out to my mother, which my mother doesn't even have the same last name as me. Mm, I had to actually go through both my recruiting accounts and purge all of my family and friends and everything that way you know none of this none of them get targeted yeah um but you know she i i, I like to think of it as probably she was in the heat of the moment and stuff but if she would have just reached out to me and and you know just asked say you know hey is this you or this look, you? look at the messages 99 percent of the time yeah is are in broken english and 
you know. It's... And and nothing was said about her 16-year-old friend um, sending naked pictures to a man she'd never met. Yeah. Now, I would be a rather sort of um, wary of telling anybody about my 16-year-old friend who'd sent naked pictures to, to an older man that she'd never met. Oh, and wow. that doesn't seem to be a problem to these girls. And I do apologise. I'm going to not lose my temper anymore. No, not <laughs> all the people You're from fine. Nigeria are scams. Um, but if you happen to be watching this, there's no reason to. So it's very suspicious. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, the thing is, Josh, that, you know, you've got 16-year-old girls taking the clothes off and sending naked pictures to, to Nigerians. They can do what they like online. It gets me that they've got to, you know, come to you about it. Now, also, she said that um, that the scammer was obviously blackmailing her and asking for money. Now, you're a recruiter. You know how the army works. So yeah. tell me, um, any situation that a soldier would need to ask for money from anybody? Negative. No, and especially being a we become subject matter experts in all of the benefits and perks of being a service member. And, you know, even if a soldier does get into a tough spot with money or a tough situation, there are tons of different programs and opportunities out there to help support them. No soldier is ever going to come out and say, hey, I need money, I'm trapped, my command can't help, you know, because that's what the command is there for. Yeah. They're there to, yeah. you know, support that especially the younger soldiers and so. of course you are paid when you're out there you see this this is something i never understand they will say we don't get paid while we're deploying <laughs> well that's a ridiculous notion you get paid more when you deploy because it's yeah it's you will say that <laughs> plus depending on where you are i mean i was i was in korea for a while we were up like right on the dc and we were getting you know hazard pay and everything else yeah. and you know, you get paid more, and you're in a situation to where if you are deployed, you're not going out to clubs, you're not yeah. going out doing all this stuff, so you, you have more money to pay yeah. after, after yeah. that. So. And, and, you know, nice, because I know a lot of you, as you've just said, you haven't got a lot to spend it on, because you don't need to, you're not paying for your um, internet, or your data, or access to anything. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, and and that's one of the the problems is a lot of people, especially the the ones who are getting targeted with these scams, they don't understand it. Um, these scammers, and it just sickens me. They, uh, they they target people because they know that you know they they're going to support the military. They they look at you in a different light, and especially being a recruiter, we're away from we like we like to call it the flagpole. We're away from you know a big base. We're kind of out here in normal USA towns that don't see too much military. So it's <laughs> a lot of people don't understand and they, they look at us a different way because, you know, military members should conduct themselves to a higher standard regardless. Yeah. So but people you, see that. And... You, I mean, when you're at work, whether you are on a base or whether you are in your recruiting station, you're actually wearing a uniform so you know you're not going to do anything that's going to let down that uniform and that's and, been, and been, that's been one of the the downfalls of recruiting for me especially getting into this situation um i've been in recruiting for a year and a half now it's a three-year gig and then i get to go back to my normal job but in that year and a half the first year i never saw any big problems like this it wasn't until you know, i got a little bit more of a following on my actual recruiting yeah. pages both instagram uh facebook twitter and the thing is with with being a service member they tell you you know you have to have operational security you, you have all your papers on private um you don't release any information you you know you have to be very careful with social media it's a new age but when you come to recruiting yeah. you kind of drop all that because it's like okay we'll open up your paper because you're trying to you get know, you use it army and yeah. get people in and so it's it's different and that, the majority of my pictures 99 percent of the pictures that these scammers have seen are me just like this it's yeah in my uniform yeah. and on an on a a normal military base i get off work i take my uniform off immediately 
and then, you know, go out and do my own stuff. Now it's, you know, you're walking around town. Um, you are like the face of the army. So it's, it's easier for these scams to collect a lot of this material to use towards these, these victims. Yeah. And I mean, they do. And I think it's awful that you cannot put anything on, on online because it's 2021. Everybody does. You can't put anything online because somebody's going to come along and steal it to use it to steal money from people, you know, so they're going to use you for bad purposes. Yeah. And I, I don't know the answer. I wish I did. You know, I, I really, really wish I did. Um, now, if you were, if you were away and when you do get deployed and anybody, anybody wanted to send you something, um, I know you're not going to ask for the latest iPhone, <laughs> but if anybody wants to send you something, they don't send it to your Nigerian agent or your, no. <laughs> or your Turkish agent. If you're deployed, um, the biggest thing to notice, especially with this camera, so if, if you're somebody who's watching, you know, right now, or you're somebody who watches this a week from today, or six months, or even a year from today, all right, you can pick out pick out the, the biggest, you know, evidence that it's a scammer if it's not an APO address. So the address that you're going to be sending stuff to, if it really is a military member, it's going to be an APO address. So that's going to, you know, like a military base that's, you know, off the grid. And also, I mean, let's face it, if anybody wanted to send you something, it's, I know it is in this country. If you send it through the military post, it's cheaper. So, you know, it's cheaper than sending to the Nigerian agent. You know, yeah, actually, um, actually, usually down that, yeah, yeah, and and it it's just, I mean, I I often do send people to know <laughs> you you obviously haven't had them yet, but um, I often do send people to recruiting stations and say, look, go down there and ask them, you know, because they'll say to us, well, how do you know? Well, I know because I ask you guys. Yes, you know, all, you know, we have you people lady... actually come to the station or call the station, yeah. um, usually at least once every month or once every couple months, that tell us about a scammer. Yeah. You know, they tell us, hey, there's a service member that's asking me to send this and this and this. And, you know, for the most part, the military is a very large organization. So mm -hmm. if you tell me, you know, John Smith is doing this, yeah. you know, I'm not going to know John Smith, but I, the majority of us have the wherewithal to understand you know, nobody's going to be asking you for money. Um, nobody's going to be trapped in Afghanistan and not have a plane, money for a plane ticket, anything yeah. like that. So call call your local recruiter. I do if, like I, I do like the ones where they're on secret missions. <laughs> you know, the clue is in the title there. You know, it's secret, um, and yet they t they tell you about it. I mean, plenty of people have have, have told me that um, when you are away somewhere. You know, say I started to talk to you and you were in Syria, you would not be able, and you didn't know me, you, you, you'd never met me at all. And for some reason, I started to talk to you. You couldn't tell me where you were. No, no, I couldn't give you, I, I, I wouldn't even be able to give you a country. Mm. Um, because then at that point, you, you know, it's the operational security aspect of it. You're not only um dangering yourself but you're dangering the soldiers around you and whatever mission you may be on which is logical because i could be me or i could be somebody from isis or a, the taliban or anything trying to get information you know so it's very logical that you couldn't give away that information yeah it, and it, it happens too um it's not just the scammers who are looking for money there's you know, and we, we get trained on it every year, every few months about operational security and the, and the do's and don'ts of, you know, social media. Um, from when I was a kid, it's, it's a whole lot different now. Um, you have pretty much everything at your fingertips. Uh, I remember having one of those Nokia brick phones that, like, <laughs> indestructible. You know, I'm 31 now. Um, but it's, it's different. And it's not only the scammers who are out there looking to, you know, take advantage of you and scam other people. It's, it's also the enemy at the same time. Of course. So. You know, and, and, you know, if you were talking to somebody, I mean, there's no way that you would ever say, go to Hangouts. Do you know what Hangouts is? Um, I 
not sure if <laughs> I can think of something. Is it kind of like a WhatsApp or? Yeah, it's 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 the Google version of WhatsApp. And honestly, if you ever have any spare bombs, drop them on on Hangouts <laughs> because it is just one hundred percent. It really is one hundred percent scammers. It's scammers and victims, and. They, they get them there because they get them, you know, you can get all your victims into one place. But and we try to say to people, there's no way that you would say go to Hangouts. Yeah. And it's or, getting or this message. Where, you know, like, oh, well, I can't text you. Please go to WhatsApp or go to, you know, Hangouts and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> or if you do at least a little bit of deep dive into some of these people's info on their on their profiles, you could you could tell that you know, the information just doesn't add up, especially yes. with the, the email addresses and the phone numbers and, and all that. And, and no, often, I mean, often the names don't, don't match up because they try to take an old African account, put your <laughs> name in brackets afterwards, you know, a little parenthesis with, with your mm -hmm. name in. And, um, and they say, oh, no, I'm not really called Obi Wadji Mobley. Ob Ob <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Um, I'm really called John Smith. Um, and, you know, that's not going to happen. And then you say to them, well, why? Why the African name? Oh, there's my nickname I got when I was in Africa. Yes, I'm going to put it all over social media. Oh, and, you know, we've got to get, we've, we've really got to get men and women. I just, um, I just left a, a gentleman before I came on to you um, who'd been on to a site called Adam for Adam and gay dating site one of the soldiers that's always used on women okay. and the man's lost 50 grand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish I knew how I, I really do because, you know, the story that he got was that, that he was in Iraq or Iraq, as you call it. And, um, <laughs> and they came across some gold and the gold had to be got out of the country so he was going to send it to him but all the customs and everything had to be paid and you've got we've we've got to get through to people that online life is no different from ordinary life because mm. that wouldn't happen to you and it's it's a lot of these situations so it it, it started out um to me the the majority of what's happening now started out about six months ago and it started out as funny to me because I got, you know, I, it was brought to my attention that there are scammers out there and, um, I hadn't really received any messages at that point. So I looked up, you know, just my name, I typed in Easton and army, and I found that there were at least 50 different profiles on Facebook of me. And I was anywhere from a secret agent to the, the sergeant major of the army, which is, you know, the highest enlisted, you know, mm -hmm. member in the army. Um, you know, I, I lived in 10 different countries. And at that and it's point, usually Dallas, Texas, when you when, yeah. when you're in the in the US, it's usually Texas. Yeah. And I thought it was it, to me, it was a little bit hilarious at that point, because I'm like, OK, nobody's going to fall for this. And then a couple of weeks went by and the messages started flowing in. And it wasn't just females, it was males as well telling me, you know, dating sites, sites that I've never even heard of, um, different countries. I, the first one, it was a young lady from Germany, and she told me about the whole situation. She'd been talking to this guy for, you know, months on end. She thought that, you know, she was in a committed relationship, and I didn't go deep into whether or not she had sent him anything like that but at that point it started to get serious at least in my mind and you know i i brought it up higher to my command and and they told me to monitor it and you know basically document everything i've seen and and now it's gotten to a point where um i have at least 10 or 15 different countries people from them yeah. um reaching out to me and and telling and i get 10 messages a day from people and it ranges from you know hey, I didn't fall for this to, oh, my God, you are a horrible, despicable human being. Oh, look at the pup. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh. That's Brian. 
who wants to be in. Um, yeah, and, and, and you know, this is, this is the thing because it's reflecting badly, it's reflecting badly on, on you. And no, it's not because we know it's fake. Um, but I don't know how we can get to a point. That's better because your arm's not going to hurt now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I have mine coming. Coming in. Oh, your dog is beautiful. Come here, Charlie. She is really gorgeous. You see, mine's scraggy. Look at that. I mean, this is <laughs> that, that's just scraggy. Yours, yours is better. I, I guarantee yours is more behaved than mine is. Mine's <laughs> only about seven months and we're still in the puppy stage. So, oh, she is gorgeous. No, he's, he's very good, but he does like attention. So, yeah. I'm talking to somebody else in the room and he can't see who I'm talking to. So. <laughs> So that's what it is. But it's getting too personal. And I mean, the thing is that we might not understand it. And I don't. I have to be honest about that, that I don't understand it. But they are really hurting people's lives. Because these people that get scammed, that get scammed the most, are trusting. So you've got somebody who actually trusts. Yeah. And, and you're scarring them for life. Yeah. I mean, I had a, a, a lady today, and she was English. She, um, she, 14 months she'd been with the scammer. She has two loans that she has, so she's going to be paying those off for the next three years. She actually, you know, couldn't trust anybody again because she trusted her scammer. And, and, and they hadn't been quick with her to get money. You know, they built her up, they, they built her up. But as you said about the countries, they literally scam from America to Australia and all points in between. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Google Translate's got a lot to answer for, but it really, it really does just cover every single country. And that's why I appreciate, you know, your guys' organization and everything that you do, because, you know, before this, it, it, it didn't really come out to me as like, you know, something that was really going on to this magnitude. Yeah. And uh, without your guys' help, um, like you had said yesterday, <laughs> my my account, I was talking to you guys and, and my no account was shut down on the spot. And I didn't even know it because we were doing a special event at the recruiting station. And then by the time I pulled it up, I'm like, you know, I don't have any access. And that's not the first time. Um, yeah. Yeah. that's my my uh facebook was shut down last week or two weeks ago and it basically gave me a message that said you know i'm a safety risk and um you know there's no way that i was going to get my account back and i messaged you and you guys were able to you know contact facebook and get it back up um so everything that you guys have done to help me with this situation i'm very very appreciative so I, I, just, uh, I wanted to thank you guys both for everything that you guys are doing that that's i mean i find it impossible that this that there is no way of con i mean we have a contact at facebook at the moment but you know there is no way of contacting facebook and instagram and they've got all these people on there hmm. and, and all these things many, are happening <laughs> you know how many times i've tried to contact or, or get posts or, uh, you know, profiles removed, especially Instagram's getting better about it. Um, for the most part, I, I see a lot of these fake profiles popping up and, and they're, they're dumb because they're liking my posts and they're sending messages and, you know, their little uh, profile picture pops up and I'm like, you know, that's me. <laughs> okay, so I report it. <laughs> yeah. And after, you know, within like an hour to three hours, um, Instagram has been, sorry, I might have to plug my phone in in a second. <laughs> um, Instagram's been taken down, but uh, Facebook. Every single time I try to report some of these, and and they're you know blatant scammers, just like yes. pull out, and yeah. they keep on telling me that you know it doesn't go against our community guidelines. And it's you know I don't know what to do at this point. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing that they have this platform on um, these platforms. And they are allowing it because they are allowing it. Yeah. You know what? You, they've got all this to boast about all this, art, you know, artificial intelligence. Well, it's not very, you know, it's not very intelligent at all because I don't believe there's nothing they could do about it. Well, yeah, you they know? have their hands into other things that are, you know, 
more beneficial to them as a company or organization. And, you know, they don't necessarily look at stuff like this as a big problem now until it starts to blow up into, you know, something that's really advertised as a big problem. And then at that point, maybe. Can you imagine, can you imagine wanting to advertise with um, Facebook and they're going to, um, you know, send you a list of whoever they've got. And there's going to be sort of 20,000 doctors in Yemen, you know, and things like this, because that's literally what there is on, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so surely at some point there's going to be a breaking point with it, you know, and there's a lady, she's just reported Keanu Reeves and you'll be absolutely shocked how many fake Keanu Reeves there are, you know, and, and these people are getting money. So excuse me, I'm just going to put the dog down. Oh, no, you're fine. <sighs> I'm going to go sit on the counter so I can plug my phone in. <laughs> yeah, I had this. Yeah, I, I had this the other week. I had I had somebody and I could see it going down and I couldn't find the table at all. So, so yes, Josh. Um, basically, yes, yeah, you've, you've answered all the questions. The fact that, you know, yeah. basically it's not you. It's and it's not and and this will be a very helpful tool for me um, for when I, I do get, you know, people messaging me or asking me these questions and you know, a lot of the times they're like, oh, no, you're not the real one. Well, prove to us that you're the real one. Send us a picture yes. of this. And I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, I can prove to you because the way I talk, I can prove to you because, you know, you can go through my profile and you can realize I have so many different posts and they, they weren't all put up within two hours of each other and yeah. you know but but having this as a tool to to actually show people will be very helpful so again, because, because as well i mean the reason i started doing this um was the fact that um when you're in conversation with somebody and let's face it josh this is a video call not the little you know oh i saw him move so it was yeah. him <laughs> this is a video call where you talk you talk you know, and it's answered. And and the thing is about the scammer, they start to talk to, uh, hello, baby. How are you doing? I love you very much, honey. <laughs> and I, I can actually say, hand on heart, none of you talk like that at all. No, and if, and if there are people who talk like that, they should be taken off social media. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what I've found is people have said, I watched the live chat and... I realized that he's different to, you know, what they've been coming over, the, this stilted conversation that comes over with them and all the endearments, really. You know, I don't know anybody in 90, under 99 that calls anybody dear. <laughs> I think I do it for sarcasm sometimes, but... Um, I think my wife does not... when she's mad at me. <laughs> Oh, that's a very brave thing to do, Josh. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you know, it sort of it shows your personality because you're nothing like the conversation that they've had with, yeah. you know, with the scammer. Um, I haven't seen any voiceovers of yours yet. Um, a lot of the other guys have had them. Oh, really? <laughs> and I'm ashamed to say that they're hilarious. Oh man, we said we got to put together a, a whole new Instagram, just to, <laughs> you know, a parody. Oh, yeah, it really is hilarious because when you see this this person sort of talking and then this Nigerian voice is coming through, it's you know. But there again, it's it often helps because obviously when they get them sent, they realise they're not talking to the real person, so you know, it's it's quite good. Um, but no, what I needed from you was what you said that you're not deployed anywhere um that you're not talking to anybody that you've got a lovely wife and you're not looking for another one um she'd kill you um, she would she's only like five foot one and a hundred pounds but she's squirrely trust me i'd yeah, be only a five, i'm only five feet as well it's it's sort of good good strong stuff in little bundles you know mm -hmm. um yeah um and it's just because, you know, they, they get these stories and they come to us and say, oh, yes, but they divorced. She's a drug addict. Or, you know, she died in a car crash. Do you know, it's awful because the roads of Texas must be really bad to drive for young wives. 
because the amount of them that have car crashes is just ridiculous. Um, but, you know, they say, you know, she's she's deceased or she's divorced and on, and on drugs. Um, you know, and we can say, look, she isn't. This is this is you saying that she isn't. No, she's, and, and she's 100 percent healthy. She's in the back room folding laundry right now. <laughs> which you know once i get i told her not to i told her not to but she's very hard-headed and and you know but that's, that's she probably have, one of the reasons why i married her you know is she's she just hard come on here time. and given her opinion of scammers yeah. oh she's she has her opinion you should talk to her <laughs> yeah i'd love to i'm actually thinking of doing that because um yeah because they always you know they always portray the wives as, as, as out of the thing. And also, the thing is, as well, they portray them all, you know, she was awful to the children. She left the children. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's sort of, I don't know whether they do that in Africa, but we don't do it. Um, so, yeah, so it's just, it's getting everything across, Josh. And it's having this tool of you being in conversation, as you would be if you were talking to a woman, if and you wanted to have a video chat and you had a video video chat because even deployed you can have a video chat yeah absolutely yeah you know There's never going to be a circumstance uh, uh, with technology and everything um every soldier is going to have a phone to start with because yeah and know. a phone where the camera works yeah yeah so there's never if if anybody's acting that way it's it's shady and you should know that you know something's wrong well if they say that um the camera doesn't work well if the front camera doesn't work they can use the back camera mm -hmm. which you know men do because they like to take pictures of themselves <laughs> in the conveniences with the sort of like toilet in the background but you know um yeah. but you know the thing is that what we're saying is making a joke of it but everybody's camera works yeah. so they can they can do it um so basically if you if a woman any woman who's watching this now or watches it in the future is contacted by someone who says they're military please tell them what to do yeah absolutely um so step one is just making sure that you you look at the the little individual um, the way they form our sentences, um, you look at their profiles uh definitely deep dive into their profiles because you know if they if they have a hundred different uh photos on their profile and they were all you know sent within one or two days of each other um if they come straight after, out at you and they say well hey baby or you know whatever's going on um that that should be at least one it's evidence that they're either a scammer or they're somebody that you don't want to talk to even to begin with um, even if they aren't a scammer, um, and, you know, ask the opinions of the people around you as well, because, you know, this is a big world. Um, and I guarantee if you have a circle of 10 friends, um, at least one of those friends has probably gone through the same situation that you're yeah. going through right now. Yeah. And then, uh, the next thing is, you know, there are military recruiters in every single town, um, if you can, if something like that comes out at you and it's somebody asking for money or it, it looks kind of shady as a profile, just contact your recruiting office. Um, we're not all the, the used car salesmen that people think <laughs> that we are. We're not just looking to, you know, throw a ruck on your back and put a, you know, a bag over your head and shove you in a bus. Um, you know, the majority of us are, are very good people. Um, but, but reach out to those people because that's a, a good local re, uh, resource that you can use to uh, validify, you know, a lot of these messages that are coming your way. Yeah. So because you guys know, and you you are going to tell the truth. They can ask me. I can say, oh yeah, he can video call while he's away. Well, how do you know? But if you tell them, yeah, yeah, that's how you know because you are one and you're recruiting for it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, absolutely fantastic, Joyce, Josh, and I really hope that we get to the bottom of these schoolgirls. Um, they haven't answered me. Um, I feel bad. I feel really bad for them. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of ticked off a little bit at the fact that you exactly. know, the one put herself in this situation. Um, yeah. I, I, 
I actually had a soldier that that went through a scam situation. Uh, we came back from nine months in Korea. Um, we were on leave, and he contacted me at like two, three o'clock in the morning and said, "Hey, I'm in a situation. I was talking to this girl that I thought was around my hometown, and I sent her some some pictures and stuff like that, and now." She's saying that she knows my command and she's going to send all the photos to the, the post general and, and everything. And I don't know what to do. Um, so I basically had to, you know, talk with military police and, and yeah. the ID, the criminal, you know, for us and, you know, get to the bottom of it. And it's, it's not just happening, happening with people um, pretending to be military and contacting civilians. It's also happening to a lot of military members as well. Um, and uh, uh, the, the term that I heard it was called was sextortion. Sextortion, it's, yeah, it's on the army website as well, I think they talk about. Yeah, so. Yeah, and well, let's face, let's face it, they will, they will have a go at anybody. They will have a go at anybody they think they can get some money from. And yeah, if they can, if they can do this to, you know, you were nine months in Korea, so they know you've come back with some money. Yeah. You were paid well while you were over there. Um, you, you didn't let your guard down, you're away from home. You know, many good reasons why you might just fall for it. And I always say you might not fall for it on one particular day, but they just, boom, get you on another day. And on that day, you're just feeling a bit down or a bit lonely or a bit, oh, she looks nice, he looks nice. The, um, yeah, the, the next thing I would say is um, if you're watching this either today or a year from now and you're a parent, it's very important to have these conversations with your kids. Um, I don't have I don't personally have any kids yet, but, you know, I I know a lot of the stuff that when me and my wife do have children that, you know, these are some of the big things that you need to hit up um, because it's not just virtual. Um, you know, if there's scammers that, you know, are in your own back door and um you know especially with the teenagers yes human trafficking everything else so yeah. you know it, it gets more and more serious so if you're a parent have these conversations with your children um it could save their life and just make them aware of what's going on and you know we we, we joke about it when pam and i do them and we say hey we could stop scamming tomorrow don't talk to strangers and people think it's funny but it would work you know, and, and social media is not to get friends across the world as much as they like to tell you because it's too dangerous. Yeah. You know, it's it's far too dangerous. And it's the same if you have the other end. We, we get um, sort of around now where, you know, they've all bought tablets for grandma for Christmas um, because grandma can then, you know, get in touch with them and do FaceTime and things like that. By the time it gets to now, grandma's got sparkles in her eyes and she's buying itunes cards and you know it's it's not unusual for 70 odd year old women who i have to say are still sending naked pictures um to fall for for these scams and send a lot of money so it is all ages it is from the 16 year olds it is up to however old they sat on their own with you know so it's keeping an eye on everybody, really. And the only thing is Josh's awareness and education. Yeah. It really has it's just got to be everybody knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And anything that anything that we can do, um, or any of you you out there watching, anything that you could do to help, you know, educate people on situations and stuff. Yeah. It could save somebody, you know, their savings. It could save somebody their life. And don't think that you don't want to talk about it because it's a taboo subject it shouldn't be it should be the most open subject in the world because it's one of the biggest crimes in the world and it's one of the most common crimes in the world so it's got to be talked about and it's 100 so, percent preventable it is at every single scam every single scam that we come across it could have been prevented and a little story for the ones that's there two seconds um when people come to us, sometimes they tell us how much they've lost. We don't ask. It's not, you know, I'm not being nosy. But sometimes we'll say, I've, let, I've, I've sent 50,000, I've sent 1,000 or whatever. 
So we add them all up. At the moment, we're on 139 people have told us that, you know, how much money they've sent. And we're on over $5 million of losses on those 139 people. And that's a very small proportion of the ones that, that you know, other people come to us actually tell us. So heaven only knows what it is. So I will say good afternoon to you. Yeah, and I shall let you go. And I shall let you go and fold the laundry for your lovely wife. Oh, I will. I will. Trust me. <laughs> I, got, I probably have some yard work to do. She has her... Uh... She has her, her honey-do list that, that she's already marked a lot of this stuff off of. So I'm going to hide this from her and I'm going to knock out the rest of them. So. That's really organized. I right. need to be that. I need to be that organized. I just I'm going to, I'll send you a, I'll send a, a DM through here and I'll, I'll put you in touch with my wife that way. If you have any <laughs> questions for her. You Absolutely. Can... So my next, yeah, my next time I do a live chat in the Eastern household, it's going to be Mrs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, Josh, and I'm glad to see that you're in good spirits because I was really quite sort of a bit worried about you after, you know, after I saw that that dreadful message from that girl. And you know, we've all been 16. We've all said things that it's a long time since I was 16, I have to say. But um, we've all, you know, been very clever when we were 16 and, and maybe said things we shouldn't. But it's a, it's a very worrying trend. Yes. So. Yeah. You know, but your mum's probably like me. She's probably a hard nosed thing anyway. So, oh know. yeah, yeah. She, I'm the youngest, so she she knows her baby. She knows, you know, she she knows what I get into before I get into it. So yeah, my baby's underneath the sea in a submarine somewhere. Oh, really? <laughs> haven't heard from him for ages, but uh, no doubt. What generally happens, I get a little picture in the middle of the night or something saying it's cold up here, but <laughs> then it's got to go back again. So, you know, so thanks very much, Josh. I'm very grateful for it. Well, thank you so and, much. I, um, I appreciate it so much. And I'll be sending people your way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's if you want to join the army, reach out to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I might do. Um, I, I can put you in. I can get a waiver for it. Yeah. Oh. Excellent. I can just see me. Do you know when I was seven, seven, eighteen, I think I was, I did one of those assault courses, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't think I could do them now. But at 18 years old, I did one of those assault courses and I went all the way over. Mm. You see, so I've not always been a. Old I, I think you can still handle it. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And um, we will no doubt talk again. Thank you, Ruth. I'll talk okay. to you soon, okay? Okay. Bye now. Okay. Bye. Bye. Well, thanks very much to Josh. That was, that was really brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He told you an awful lot of things. And, you know, these are videos that we can use and we can use again. Because, you know, he is the one that's there. He is telling you. He's telling you it's not him. And he's also telling you what happens in the army if people are talking to other servicemen or women, you know. So thank you very much, Josh. And thank you very much to everybody who's um, has been with us tonight. There's a few less than when we joined because uh, the girls have been very good and banned a few. Um, but, you know, we do, we do get a lot of attention from um, Nigeria. Um, I will say that we've got a, a Google, um, the scamhatersunited.com, we've got a website, and I get sort of stats, and the United States is the place where the most people come from. Number four is Nigeria, so they're way up there in our audience. So thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I'll see you next week with Pam. Good night now. <laughs>